the flowers and apple trees are produced in clusters. The stage before the flowers have actually opened is called the balloon stage. This is a cluster of eight flowers on a sunset tree and shows a range of stages of development, starting with the youngest. Here we've got a flower in a tight early balloon stage. It's too young to be emasculated because it would be difficult to actually get inside and, uh, the centre of the flower and remove the anthers. It would be very small at this stage. However, this flower is at a later, quite late balloon stage and could easily be opened and used for emasculation of the centre. This cluster on the same tree shows the later stages of flower development. Here we have a flower that's beginning to lose its petals. The majority of the anthers are shedding their pollen but there's still some that haven't matured. The female part of the flower can be seen quite clearly with the five styles or filaments emerging from the centre, the tip of each the stigma that receives the pollen. I'm going to show you how I remove the male parts from the flowers that I'm going to use as the female parent in a cross between two varieties, Discovery and Spartan. First thing to do is to identify the particular cluster of flowers you're going to use for crossing. The main criterion is that the flowers should still be in the balloon stage. A cluster like this, where the majority of the flowers are still in the balloon stage, is ideal, provided the central flower that's already open is removed. When I perform a cross, I normally select just three flowers on a flowering cluster to pollinate. So the first thing I do is remove any flowers that I'm definitely not going to um, pollinate. For example, ones that are too tightly bound to open up and remove the male parts, or ones that have already opened. I don't tend to take off all the remaining extra flowers until I've actually successfully managed to remove the male parts from the three I want to use. It's a bit of a fiddly operation. I tend to try and disturb the flowers as little as possible so I don't remove the petals. What you need to do this is your small pair of tweezers. The first thing to do is to gently prise open the flower to reveal the centre. And the male parts of this flower are the stamens, at the tip of which are the anthers. These are the yellow pollen bearing organs. And in order to avoid any possibility of self-pollination by this flower, you need to remove all of them. You just very gently go around the flower, taking the, the uppermost ones off first. There's a fair number of these, well over ten. Once you're taking the topmost ones off, just gently removing them. You have to slightly probe down in the lower regions, the base of the central female part of the flower style, to remove the last few of the anthers. So you're not removing the whole stamen, you're just taking the tips of the stamens off, in other words the anthers, and what you're left with is essentially an emasculated flower with just the female parts. And I'd perform the same operation on two others in this cluster. 
and taking this as done, I then remove any extra unwanted flowers. And so I'd removed the male parts from those two other flowers there. This would be now ready for pollination in a couple of days. Once the flowers had fully opened in order to maximize the chances that the female part of the flower is absolutely ready to receive the pollen. However, having said that, sometimes I've had to act a little bit earlier and sometimes I probably hand pollinated when the flower, the female, designated female flower, is a little bit past it. Once you've removed the male parts from each of the flowers in the cluster you've identified, the next thing you do is protect it from any natural pollinating insects by enclosing it in a, a small bag. I use small muslin bags about four inches long with a diameter of maybe two to three inches and the trick is to enclose the whole flower in one of these until the time you're actually going to perform the pollination, the hand pollination. This can be quite fiddly and you have to be careful that you don't actually bend back the flowers and snap them off from the base of the stem they've come from. And then I tie the base of the muslin bag a piece of string on which I put a coloured bead, maybe one, two or three coloured beads, so that I know exactly which flower is which, both before and after I perform the hand pollination. Flowers that are already opened are of no use, because they may well have been visited by insects bringing pollen from varieties that you're not interested in, hence the flowers may be contaminated. This is a suitable cluster of flowers on a spark tree. The variety I'm going to use is the male parent of my cross with discovery. You can see that all the flowers are in the bloom stage, although some are more advanced than others. This is an advantage in that it will provide a succession of flowers with fully ripen pollen so that I can do more than one cross over a period of several days. I simply bag them, protect them against any visiting insects with a muslin bag and then tie the base, the open end of the muslin bag closed with a bead tag so that I and identify the cluster when I return. What I do now is to wait several days until the flowers have opened and one or more of them has reached a stage where the anthers have dehissed and released their pollen. And at that point they'll be ready to take and hand pollinate the female parent I've chosen. As an alternative to protecting your chosen male parent flowers in muslin bags until ready to use, you can simply remove them, take off the developing petals and store them in a small labelled container inside on a windowsill until they've ripened and the anthers have begun to release their pollen and then use these to perform your fertilization or pollination of the female parent variety.